kutumia katika uh, kujiendeleza au kuendeleza wengine kwa namna gani. Wapo watakao kuwa makocha, wapo watakao kuwa wachezaji, wapo watakao kuwa mada ya kuendeleza zoezi hili, lakini pia uwepo wenu hapa uh, kuwaweza kuwafanya muwe watu bora hapo baadaye. One question I always start this uh, speech with how many people here one day would like to be a professional soccer player? Kati yenu nani ambaye ana ndoto ya kuwa mchezaji professional siku moja? Kati yenu hapa nani? Raise your hand. Nyanyua mikono. Raise it high. Juu juu juu. Nyanyua mikono yako juu. Excellent. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. What's the most important thing to being a professional soccer player? What do you think? Hai, swali hilo. Unadhani ni kitu gani muhimu? Discipline, important, but not the most important. What else? We get in. Yes. Training hard, important, but not the most important. What else? We get in. Yes. There is pressure. All true. Tell them all those things are important. But not the most important. Mm -hmm. But not the most important. The most important quality a professional footballer needs is education. professional player. Why is education the most important quality a professional footballer must have? Kwa nini elimu ni kitu cha muhimu kwa mchezaji professional? Zungumza. You must have intelligence. Lazima uwe at the professional level, at the professional level, everyone is fast, everyone is strong, everyone is big, everyone is good, everyone has skills. So what's the difference? The brain. Katika professional level, kila mtu. Anapo vyote mivu vitaja. Speed, ukubwa, na kila kitu. Lakini, ambacho, ni chamuimu zaidi, ni akini. How many people like Manchester United here, or Manchester City, or Barcelona? Raise your hand. Aya, wala Manchester City wangapi? Nyosha mikono. United. Barcelona. Basi mingwa niongezi ya kwangu. I had mine. Liverpool. Okay, if you are going to play one day for Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City, Barcelona, you cannot play in those teams if you are not intelligent. Kama unataka kuchezea hizo timu siku moja. Au ndoto yako ni kuchezea hizo timu siku moja. Hawezi ukachezea hizo timu kama akili yako haipopoa. And even more important, the question is this, what happens if you are not fortunate enough to make it? What do you do with the rest of your life? The question I have is what if you're not fortunate enough to be a professional? What do you do with your life? Come on, foolish professional unafanya unafanya nini na maisha yako Una mtu anajua kama unacheza hapo ufundishwe kuwa professional unafanya nini na maisha yako You be a coach <laughs> But if you're a coach you must be smart Because the reality gentlemen is less than 1% of all kids your age that have a dream to be a professional will actually make it to be a professional. This is the reality. Say you won't reach your goals that you want to achieve. But if you focus on your education, you go to school, you get good grades, and you play football. Then you have a plan for anything that comes in your life. Kama unaenda shule na unahudhuria masomo na unafanya vizuri katika masomo yako, utapata uelewa na kufahamu nini ambacho unataka kufanya katika maisha yako huko mbeleni. 
There is a way in the United States to continue training, playing football, and getting your education. I come from a school by the name of Montford Academy. It's located in Orlando, Florida. And we're a private boarding high school of internationals with over 90 different countries in our student body. Kuna namna tofauti kwa nchi ya Marekani ambayo kuna kuwepo na opportunity za kuweza kucheza lakini kwa masuala ya kilimo. Anatokea Mount Red Academy ambapo kuna wachezaji au wanafunzi kutoka mataifa tisini tofauti. And we have many boys from Africa. We have boys from Senegal. Every coast, Nigeria, all leaving their families, going to the United States to study and in the football field to give themselves their future. Mataifa uh, mbaya mayataje hapo, ya Africa, Kenya, Senegal, Africa Coast, watoto wama kuenda kule, wanafunza mba kuenda kule, wanafunza za kuenda kutini katika academy mbayo pia na wasaidia kwa jiri ya maisha yao, na pia kwenye elimu. And in 11 years, in my 11 years, we've developed 54 professional soccer players playing in Europe, playing in MLS, playing in USL, in the United States, and they've done it to Dani ya miyaka yake kukamuwa ya kifundisha Manfred. Wameweza kutengeneza wachezaji ambao wameweza kucheza kwenye MLS na ligi kukauti katika levo ya professional. But the good news is, if they make it or they don't make it, they have the education, to become good people and also continue in a career of life not just in football na kizuri zaidi ni kwamba kama wasipoweza kusonga mbele katika michezo wanakuwa tayari wamepata elimu ambayo inawasaidia katika maisha yao ya huko mbeleni kwa upande wao lakini pia kwa upande wa familia zao your football career can be ended through injury tomorrow For the rest of your life it can be finished uh, career yako ya mpira wa miguu inaweza ikaisha wakati wowote wa uh, kwa kupata majeraha ambayo ni magumu kwa hiyo uh, majeraha ambayo hayatibiki kwa maana hiyo inakuwa kwamba career yako imekwisha kwa maisha yako yote kwa maana hutacheza mpira but no one can reach inside and take away your education lakini hamna mtu ambaye atafika ataingia kwenye uh, kichwa chako kuchukua elimu yako this is my story personally hii ni historia yake mwenyewe i was a professional soccer player Alikuwa ni professional soccer player. I started playing for my country at 14 years old. Alianza kuchezea nchi yake akiwa na miaka 14. I played in two World Cups. Amecheza uh, michuano ya, ya kombe la dunia mara mbili. I played at university in the United States on a scholarship to help pay for my education through my football ability. Alicheza uh, katika university kwa scholarship ambayo pia ilimsaidia katika elimu. I got drafted in the MLS to the LA Galaxy, the same team of David Beckham. Alikuwa drafted kwenda kucheza MLS, Liga MLS, timu ya uh, LA Galaxy na ifahamu ambayo alicheza David Beckham. I was drafted when I was 21 years old. Na alienda LA Galaxy akiwa na miaka 21. My career was over when I was 22. Lakini ndoto yake yake iliisha akiwa na miaka 22 because of a career ending injury. Kwa sababu ya jeraha aliyopata. So I played 21 years of football. I started when I was 1. And one day I had an injury so bad I could never play professionally again. Alicheza kwa miaka 21 lakini jela alilopata wakati mmoja tu niliondoa ndoto yake ya kucheza mpira tena. But because I had an education, lakini kwa sababu alikuwa na elimu, I used my football ability to help pay for my education. Alitumia ability yake ya football kuweza kumipia katika masomo. I now become a coach na akawa kocha. And I travel around the world speaking to boys just like you na anasafiri maeneo mbalimbali duniani kuongea na wavulana na vijana kama nyinyi letting them know that the most important thing you have in your life is your education na kuwafahamisha kwamba kitu muhimu unachohitaji katika maisha yako ni elimu you can still continue to train and do your best every single day in football unaweza ukaendelea kutrain na kufanya kila kilicho bora katika football kila siku and I saw maybe three boys today that I think have potential to be a high level footballer. Aya wana ndo mnakisikia kwa ameona leo hii kuna watu watatu ambao wana potential vijana wawili ya kuwa professional football. But the reality is it's a very difficult dream to accomplish. Lakini ni kwamba ni vigumu sana uweza kutimiza hilo ndoto. And even if you make it like I did na hata kama utaweza kufanya au kufanikiwa kama alivyofanikiwa yeye 
you don't know how long it will last. Uwezi kufahamu muda gani utaendelea kudumu. Cristiano Ronaldo is 36 years old scoring goals for Manchester United and everyone is saying he's too old. Cristiano Ronaldo ana miaka 36 na bado anafunga magoli Manchester United lakini watu wanasema ni mzee. When you're 36 years old, the clubs forget about you and they start looking for the next 16, 17-year-old. Ukiwa na miaka 36, klabu inakusaa wewe na kuanza kuangalia na kuangalia mchezaji mwingine mwenye umri mdogo. But you still have your family to take care of and the rest of your life to live. Na kama una familia ya ku take care kwa kodi ya maisha yako ya baadaye. And that's where your education will last you much longer than scoring goals or kicking a ball. Na hapo ndio unapozungumzia swala la elimu na umuhimu wa elimu kwamba nitaweza kusaidia baada ya hapo. So make sure you remember no one can ever take your education away from you. It's the most important thing you can rely on for your entire life. Kumbuka amna usiruhusu mtu kuweza kuchukua elimu kutoka kwa kuichukua elimu yako kwa sababu hicho ndio kitu muhimu katika maisha yako. And you never know, remember, every time you train, every time you play, every time you compete, you never know who's watching you. Na kumbuka kila wakati unapofanya mazoezi, kila wakati unaposhindana, kila wakati unapocheza I'll give you one quick story and I'll finish. I was in Kenya five years ago. In a situation just like this. All the teams were warming up to play so I could watch them. And there were two boys sitting just like those two over there were on the bench. Two boys were sitting just watching. Na kulikuwa kuna watoto wawili wamekaa kama wale waliokaa pale katika bench wakiangalia. I told the guy I was with I said do those two play football? Akauliza wale waliokuwa nao kwamba wale vijana wawili wanacheza mpira. He said I don't know I'll go ask them. Akasema mimi sijui nitaenda kuuliza. He said yes they do. I said do you have your stuff? They said no, we didn't bring your stuff. I said do you want to play? They said yes. So they both played with no equipment barefoot. Akauliza mkuja na vifaa vyenu akasema Hapana, akawaambia basi kama amjeje na vifaa, ingieni mcheze uh, bila vifaa. Na wakaingia kucheza bila viatu. All of the kids that I saw that day, I like the one on the bench. Wote wale aliokuwa wamewaangalia siku ile, hakuwaona zaidi ya wale ambao walikuwa kwenye bench na kuingia. We offered him an opportunity to come to the United States, to Munford Academy to study and continue his training. Wakapewa uh, wakapewa fursa ya kwenda Marekani, Munford uh, Academy he came when he was 16 years old and he graduated from Montverde Academy at 18 when he graduated from Montverde he had three professional contract offers but we said no because he valued and his parents valued education more and he got a full scholarship to Clemson University he played his first two years at Clemson University. He was the best player in the country. After the second year, Major League Soccer, the league, offered him a very big contract and he signed his first professional contract when he was 20 years of age. Baada ya miaka miwili uh, Major League MLS waka akapata contract ya MLS na kusign mkataba wa miaka miwili. And I made sure that the college he went to when he was finished playing he's able to go back there and finish his degree for free. Na akahakikisha kwamba college ambayo alikwenda huko inaweza itampatia muda wa kuweza kumaliza masomo yake na ambapo alimaliza degree yake. So he was able now to get an education. He was able to make money now for his family. He's able to play professionally and also able to complete his college degree when he's finished. And he comes just from Kenya in a situation like this with a boy over there who I saw talent in. And he makes most of it now. Kwa hiyo aliweza kuaccomplish kwa vitu vyote hivyo kama anavyoweza kuona kwamba kupata elimu yake, kutengeneza pesa kwa ajili ya familia yake na yeye wenyewe lakini pia kuweza kumaliza degree yake na anatokea hapo Kenya lakini vyote vimewezekana kwa sababu you never know who's watching. And in this plan, this boy, his name is Philip Mayaka. Mayaka has made it as a professional. But he's also made it through education. And when he's finished, he'll finish his education and live both dreams. He's a professional football player with an education.
when his career is over, hopefully 36, he can return to Kenya and be a productive citizen to his community and give back to the kids just like you and just like he was. This is the beautiful game. Kama uh, unawasikia Mayaka ameweza kufanikiwa katika hayo. Kwa ina maana kwamba elimu ipo. Anacheza mpira na atakapofika muda wa kustaafu anaweza karudi nyumbani Kenya na kuwasaidia vijana au watoto wengine kama yeye alivyoweza kutoka lakini kwa elimu ambayo ameipata. This is my first time in Tanzania and I can say I, Tanzania. I really appreciate your effort this morning, the way you competed, the way you showed support respect. To me I had a really great time with you and I applaud you. Thank you very much for your work. Ili maana yake kwanza Tanzania anawashukuru kwa kufika kwenu, anawashukuru kwa kuweza kujitolea kuwepo hapa na anawashukuru sana. And to the and to the coaches keep them because you're doing a very good job. Makocha wala sinaja kwa tafsiria. Najua kwamba wote And to the players always respect your coach. Kumbukeni kuheshimu makocha wenu. They are giving up to try to help you. For those in your life trying to help you, respect them. Wale ambao wanakusaidia katika maisha yako, waheshimu. Because there's many people around where there's no one to help. Kwa sababu kuna watu wengi lakini hawasaidi. Respect the opportunity and respect the game. Kwa hiyo, heshimu hicho ulichopata na uheshimu. Thank you. Asante. I want to thank you all for coming out today. Nataka kuwashukuru nyote kwa kufika hapa leo. Nafahamu kwamba uh, baadhi yenu mnatoka mbali sana uh, ili kuweza kuja katika uh, tukio hili. And, and na ameona na amependezwa hata kuwapongeza tujipige makofi kwa kila alichokiona ameona soka nzuri sana uh, kutoka kwenu na makocha mnafanya kazi nzuri sana. So everything that was said earlier is absolutely true. You need to have a backup plan because not everybody will make it as a professional athlete. Kila kitu kilichoongelewa ni cha kweli na mnahitaji muwe na chaguo la pili katika maisha yenu kwa sababu bila elimu hauwezi ukasogea kokote. So I will be talking inside where it's less hot and giving you more information about your the possibility of studying in the United States. Ataongea nyinyi ndani ambapo kule kuna hali ya hewa nzuri kidogo kuwaeleza ni jinsi gani unaweza ukapata opportunity ya kwenda kusoma Marekani. Nataka kiyoyote. Eh uh, kiyoyote. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyways, just just want to uh, one last time. Thank you all. Best of luck and it is a real pleasure for us as the US Embassy to be able to participate and I also forgot to mention but I'm glad I didn't everybody involved in organization uh, of this tournament everybody that's helped your parents that have been helping you and the people that are always forgotten where are they the referees referees nobody ever thanks the referees ah ana shukuru kwa kweli kwa kuweza kuepa hapa lakini anashukuru kila mtu kwa sababu balozi wa Marekani organizer wote walikuepa hapa walioweza kufanikisha jambo hili na ni jambo la kujipongeza lakini pia bila kuwasahau marefali ambao wamefanya kazi nzuri kwa kweli eh, ya kuweza kuendesha mchezo huu eh, na training hii kwa siku ya leo. Asanteni sana. Asanteni sana. Lakini mbona kama mmelala hivi mpigeni makofi basi. Makofi mengi kwa Sima. Makofi mengi kwa Mike. Makofi mengi kwa balozi wa Marekani. Makofi mengi kwa Mbaki Mutahaba football all star talent nani anamjua mbapi hapo nani anamjua sio mbapi wa Ulaya mbapi wa Tanzania nani anamjua Kevin John nani anamjua wewe anamjua njo unamjua Kevin yes ni nani Kevin John ni mchezaji wa Tanzania aliyefanikiwa kwenda kucheza nje nini unachokipenda kwa Kevin ni mchezaji mzuri ambaye anapambana kwa maisha yake na kipaji chake Baki umesikia? Umemsikia dogo? Anafaa kwenda Mwanza. Eh? Lakini baki, jambo kidogo tu Kevin alichukua muda gani kuweza kufanikiwa kufika hapo alipo?
kidogo tu. Hii unajua kwa watoto ni daraja kwa daraja. Kwa kama sisi Kevin tumempata akiwa na 15 na nani. Kwa kabla hapo alikuwa Morogoro. Na mtu mwingineo. Kwa hiyo tunavolea wote tunapeana vijiti tu. Huyu anapewa na Lea tunamchukua na sisi tumeenda naye mpaka umri ambao umefikia sasa hivi na sisi tumekabidhi kwa wale wengineo ambao wako kwenye hali nzuri zaidi ya ku ya kumuongoza. Lakini mwisho wa siku mnatoka mwanze umri kama huu mapema zaidi na kama alivyosema jamani elimu muhimu kupita kiasi na sisi tunaolea watoto tunajua changamoto ambazo tunazipata na watoto wetu kwenye upande wa elimu. Wao kenda kuomba visa huku kama hata kiluga yenyewe yani unagonga una nini akileweki kabisa anaanza kuwa na wasiwasi. Mapema kwa sisi mzoeze kwa najua sisi tuna changamoto ya lugha lakini haimaanishi wewe uweze kujitahidi kidogo ukaipata ABC kwa sababu zinawezekana bila lugha na elimu kwa kweli kutoboa yani hii hii ya nyuma hii yani wewe tumia elimu yako kutoboa na wenzetu wametumia kwa wao kule wamefanya mazingira mazuri kwamba njia rahisi ya kutoboa ni kupitia shule wewe na sisi Mungu akijali labda mbeleni kuduni tutafanya jambo kama hilo kitaifa kwamba mtoto anajomba mimi ili nitoboe kimpira lazima niende shule lazima nipike shule hiyo isiwe swala kwamba unamlazimisha mzazi aidha ni mpira au aidha ni ni shule na mnajua ajibu la mzazi itakuwa ni lipi kwa hiyo ndio lengo lakini lengo la kila mtu na jukumu la kila mtu hapa kutufikisha hapo kuanzia ni nyie maana nyie ndio mnatukwamisha sisi yaani nyie vya namna umefanya ile shuleni ndio vile tukwamisha sisi tukaenda kumchukua kuongea na mzazi kama bwana kijana wako mzuri tunataka kumchukua ah shule vipi hiyo ndo swala la kwanza kwa sababu mzazi mama zenu baba zenu kwa leo hii hawaamini kwamba shule na mpira vinaweza vika vikaendana kumbuke yule ujiangalie wewe lakini kuna wengine wana wanaokuja nyuma yako ni kufungulia na milango leo hii ubalozi wamekuja tumefungua milango kadogo tu lakini tume, tumefungua akitoka wawili watatu watafungua zaidi hivyo hivyo taratibu taratibu baada ya muda kitakuwa kinaeleweka ndio hilo tu jamani shukran wala nimshukuru mbaki lakini mimi wape kitu yeye mnajua mimi nafanya wapi si ndio mimi niko na wachezaji wa ligi kuu niko na wachezaji wa ligi daraja ya kwanza niko na wachezaji sio kwamba nawamiliki lakini cases zimekuwa nyingi kwa sababu ya elimu mchezaji anatolewa na mbaki lakini kule pembeni kuna mtu anaibuka anajiita meneja. Na huyo meneja naye kuna baba naye meneja. Kwa hiyo nakuta kwamba anasaini mikataba kwa kutokuwa na elimu. Hiyo mikataba baadaye inatokea opportunity kama hii. Anakuja hapa visa imekubali na nini wanaibuka watu kila mmoja anadai wa kwake. Na wenzetu wako vizuri sana katika masuala ya mikataba. Kukitokea kitu chochote ambacho kinaleta itilafu uwezi kutoboa. Kwa hiyo waheshimuni makocha wenu kama alivyosema Mike Waheshimuni makocha wenu na muwe wa kweli. Muache tamaa katika umri mdogo. Focus. Focus. Wachezaji wengi ninawaambieni kwa kweli leo hii wapo wanacheza NBC Premier League lakini mikataba yao inawala. Wangekuwa na uwezo wa kupaka mshahara wa milioni saba mpaka milioni kumi na mbili. Lakini hawatoboi kwa kuwa wameweka mikataba bila kufahamu matokeo yake watu wanakula hela nyingi. Wachezaji kutoka nje wanajua haki zao. Umeona Morrison na kesi yake alivyoshinda. Anajua haki yake na anajua nini afanye. Kwa hiyo msibakie kusema wakili msome. Nyinyi mnatakiwa mwa wachezaji wasome. Na leo hii ndio mfungue ukurasa huo kwamba nyinyi ndio mnafungua ukurasa kwa Tanzania kwamba mnaputusua na kutoboa shuleni lakini mnakuwa ndio njia ya wengine kupita baada ya nini. Makocha ongeleni sana. Sawa, niwashukuru sana. Uh, labda kama kuna la kumalizia kabla kuingia nani? Ah bana sasa tunaingia ndani tutakuwa na makocha ndani na kama kuna mameneja naombeni sana wachezaji tukimaliza hili muabane kwa uliza nimesemwa lipi sawa maana kwa sababu ya udogo wa sehemu hatuwezi kuwa na watu wote lakini tunaamini kabisa kwamba kile ambacho tutakipata kule ndani kitashuka kwenu kwenu nyie kwa hiyo naombeni sana tushem tukimaliza zoezi mkirudi kwenye akademi zenu leo kesho lakini kwa ile session ya kuwauliza kilichozungumziwa kule ni kipu kitu gani maana kule vinazungumziwa fursa 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 kwa hiyo naombeni msisahau hilo swala na la mwisho kama nilivyozungumza Patrick kwa wale ambao wamepita mikononi mwao wanataka kesho kesho kutoka kirudi eh wakuchukule kama mwanao kwa ondoka kwa heshima wapeni heshima eh linaanza kwenu ndio tunasema kwamba watu wa mawakala sio na wadanganya lakini linaanza kwenu watoto mimi najua mtoto nikimuuliza sasa hivi una mkataba wengi wanakwambia hawana mkataba 
Kuna mtu ambaye anasema na mkataba. Wako waambia una mkataba, anasema ah niko free. Wakati unajua kabisa asilimia kubwa kama huyu mtoto yuko yuko kwenye kituo fulani. Kwao labda sisi tuna tuna tuna, tuna, tuna changia kwa danganya, lakini mwisho wa siku bado ni lenu. Eh, naombeni sana jamani, lazima tusafishe mpira wetu, tusiposafisha hawa watu hawataugusa. Yenye mwelewa, yani uchafu uchafu wetu wa mpira sio mara sio mikataba inaonekana. Huo uchafu ndio una, unaogopesha hawa kuja karibu na mpira. Ingaja wanajua mpira ndio kitu ambacho kila mtu anakipenda. Na tunaamini kabisa wanaweza wakaekeza kwa nguvu zaidi. Lakini uchafu wetu unaogopesha. Una Sizungumzi kama hawa kama wageneza ah hawa masponsa wetu wa hapa hapa. Kwa ni muhimu ili niletu sisi wote msijifichake kwenye masuala. Nyie na sisi ni kitu ki, kimoja. Tukifeli tumefeli wote, wote yani sisi wa viongozi, makocha na nyie watoto na nyie mnachangia kata kufeli. Ah mimi nilikuwa nimemaliza public affairs officer at the US Embassy and that primarily comes down to two roles. One is the press work. I, I'm responsible for the social media, our interaction with the newspapers and the television. Okay, uh, you know, Mr. Tambua, like the year in the Afisa, Mosia, or the other Italian, like in the Moya Maineo, as any matter, pulling up the Maineo by the Sana Abadi, uh, Pamoya, later to the other Yami, the other Yami, or Pandu, like in the Pia, Mosia. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then uh, the other side that I'm responsible for is the cultural and education um, portfolio for the U.S. Embassy. Uh, we understand the power of sports to change people's lives. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, uh, so for example, in U.S. secondary schools, many, many people play sports. You have, you can play golf, tennis, soccer, American football, anything. So understanding that the U.S. Uh, government likes to use, we, we, under, we, we use sports as a tool to promote other things that we're doing. So, for example, in Tanzania, we like to focus very much on the youth and creating, uh, giving them more tools from the academic standpoint so that they can have greater opportunities when they're older. So, you know, we, we tried to bring in a few years ago, we had Alex Morgan and, and her husband, which is strange to say, who was also a professional soccer player, a Servando, I want to say, Cas, Castellon, Cas, yes. <laughs> Yes. So this is why I'm so happy to be able to participate in this program today. Um, I understand the potential of Tanzanians, these players, but not only as players, also as 
uh, members of their community. And the, the other thing is that just the fact that these kids are playing sports is great because it builds many of the life skills that they'll need. Being a member of a team, being a leader, diplomacy, negotiation, being punctual, the list goes on and on. So, you know, I want to thank you for being here today and really leading these kids and making sure that Tanzanians have a brighter future. So we're always happy to promote sports, but at the same time, one of my roles is to promote education in the United States, just like Mike. So, so one of the things that I personally and professionally would like to see is more Tanzanians studying in the United States. So we have a program, it's called Education USA. Yes. So, and this is a completely free program where I have one of my colleagues will go, will travel, they'll travel Indar and they'll travel to the regions. Um, yeah. Okay. And, and his name is Jackson. And Jackson will explain the process for getting into a U.S. university. I'm not going to say it's easy, but there is a process. And if it's done correctly, we do see Tanzanians going to United States universities directly from Tanzania. So I, I ask you, I, those of you in Dar es Salaam and outside of Dar es Salaam too, to reach out to the embassy and ask about this program because I will happily send my colleague or myself will go and explain to you, explain to the audience, what are the five steps to studying in the United States? Yes. So, and, and this is everything from how to decide which university is correct for you all the way in to what should I take to wear? If I'm going to Minnesota, it's very cold. I need to be prepared for the cold. Yeah. And obviously, part of that process is how to attain a student visa. So, 
With that, I, th I think I'll stop here. If you have any questions, happy to answer what I can. And my colleague Jackson will give you this presentation in Swahili, so don't worry. <laughs> he's, he's Tanzanian. <laughs> so, uh, oh, there you go, from Mwanza, area. yeah, from the Mwanza area. <laughs> so, uh, I, I just, once again, I want to thank the organizers, everybody that's been involved in this. It's, it's a pleasure to see young people out there playing soccer. It's personally something that I love to do. I want to thank Mike for coming over. He came from a long distance uh, to give you information about his school. And I think that you should take advantage of the fact that he's here because you really can learn a lot about the educational system in the United States, secondary school in particular. But also, I think he uh, can give a few good players that have the academics. Because remember, it is a student athlete. Student is first. Athlete is second. Yeah, uh, even in America, yep. a lot of people don't have this opportunity of having Mike. Mm -hmm. If they have, it's true. they want all their kids to be there. Mm -hmm. so, to me, the first one Mike. So, I, I just want, I, I'm, I'm going to end here. There's obviously no questions, but if something occurs to you, please reach out to the U.S. Embassy. We are on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, we have a website. Look at the website. There's a lot of, there's good, good information there about many of the programs that we offer. We want to get out into the community and meet some of you. So if you have an idea for a small project in the community, we have small grants programs, for example. Okay. Uh, all right, so with that, thank you once again. It is an honor and a pleasure to be able to participate in this tournament, and uh, I wish you all the best. But before you go, oh. I have a question. Shoot. Um, I've seen some coaches here. Yes. Um, some football agents. Yeah. Managers. Yes. Uh, and part of it. So, on this part of the location, some of them are classy, some of them intermediate and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. If they want to pursue. If they want to pursue. Uh, or to, to upgrade their, 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 their CV. Yeah, so, so here's the thing, and we all know that COVID has been very difficult for everybody. So usually we have these programs, these sports exchange programs, and we bring coaches and trainers from U.S. universities to come and talk to community organizations with coaches. And when, hopefully very soon, when it is easier to travel. We will, our plan is to really go back to what we were doing and start bringing more Americans to come here and interact, specialists really, and interact with Tanzanians. So one of it is like, um, they can upgrade their, their uh, coach's license. Mm -hmm. Is it easy to bring somebody with a UEFA, I mean a FIFA 
uh, pro or whatever to train themselves that they can upgrade them? We can look into it for sure. Um, this is, you know, I, I love soccer, so this is something that would be of, you know, bring me personal joy. So we can definitely look into it. And we have had programs like that where we bring over sports professionals, not the athletes, but the people behind the scenes to come over and uh, kind of have little sessions, trainings, workshops with, uh, local, with locals doing something similar. Uh, so any more questions? It's not about coaching only. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a uh, management process. Yeah. Like it, general management, like in sports management. Well, we can do that. But I can bring you a, somebody that specializes in that. But what I need from you is an audience, a venue, you know. So it's, it's not me. Because I can bring whoever I want, but if I bring somebody that nobody cares about, I've wasted my time and my money. So I need you to tell me this is what we need. This is the audience that we have. These are the people that we can that we would like to hear from. And you give me a name, and I may not be able to get the exact name because you'll probably choose somebody very famous. <laughs> but I will find somebody with a very similar uh, CV. Somebody that has the same experience, maybe is lesser known. So every, for example, everybody wants to hear from the professor from Harvard. Maybe I can't get you the Harvard professor, but I can get you the professor from the University of Maryland, who is equally well known in the field of sports management. Well, first, first of all, I would like to thank Mbake Rodriguez from the US Embassy. It's great to be in the presence of people who are like-minded and want to help each other. When I first uh, met Mbake, he told me about Tanzania, he told me about the work he was doing with football and education, and before I decided to make the trip over, I had to make sure that our values and our ideas were the same. Because in my view, as a coach, I believe in three things. First, I believe when you're talking about kids. You need to focus on the person. Second, the student. And then third, the athlete. First is person. Second, student. Then third, the athlete. Okay. you are the student, but too many people in football think of the athlete first, no student, and no person. So I'm, I'm going to speak with them very direct about the reality. So I'm not going to sugarcoat things because I understand the audience. And I'm going to speak about my personal experiences throughout my life in education, football, in Africa, over time.
How many coaches we have here? Good. How many club owners we have here? Okay. How many parents are here? How many uh, agents are here? Okay. Tell them the good news is I've had experience myself personally and all of those. So I've been a pro player, okay. I've been a student athlete in college, okay. I've been a co I'm a coach, coach student defense, teacher, uh -huh. a director of athletics, uh, director of athletics. I'm a parent of three uh, children, <laughs> and I do agent work, but I'm not an agent. So, I know the dynamic of this room. You have the agents who want the talent to be able to make money. You have the clubs who bring in the kids to develop them with the hope of money. You have the parents who are afraid of the football so they want their kids to go to school. You have the coaches who only want to win games so they can tell the world how great they are. This is the same in the United States. It's the same all over the world. So, I'll give you a perfect example. The professional club in my city, in Orlando, is called Orlando City SC in Major League Soccer, MLS. Professional soccer katika mjiwa ke Orlando, MLS. Ipo katika MLS, Orlando City? Yeah. Yeah, Orlando City. A professional club in my city, in 11 years, has produced five players from their academy, that signed professional contracts. And one of them has played. Now I have an academy, a school, high school. 25 minutes from the pro club. We've been there the exact same amount of time. And we've produced 57 professionals. How many? 57. Yeah. The question then becomes why? How? How is this possible? It's because we do the things to develop people. We use education, we use sport to develop good people. And when you develop good people with discipline, with education, they have a much higher chance of becoming successful. So our school has 170 soccer players. 170. From age 12 to 19 years. Number one rule for all of them, they must be enrolled full time as a student at our school, Montverde Academy. So, for example, we don't accept a kid that goes to another school and trains in our academy. Because I need to make sure that every kid in our academy has the same culture. So when they're in class, it's the same rules, same discipline, same expectations. When they come to train with us, it's the same rules, 
Same structure and discipline. This allows a student to develop. Because if they're in one school with no rules, they come to my program with strict rules. They go home with another set of rules. It's impossible to develop a person. And all decisions that I make as the director are made for the person first, for the student second, and the athlete third. So for example, I'll give you a little story. In 2015, I had a kid named Sean Manley Smith from Costa Rica. Sean Manley West. Sean Manley West from Costa Rica. He came to Montverde Academy and was a national team player for Costa Rica. Very good player. But he had no discipline. So there was a time we were having a big tournament. And three professional clubs from Europe were coming to watch. The first game was on Friday. The professional clubs arrived Thursday. On Thursday, I get an email from a teacher that Sean cheated on a test. Now I, now I have a problem. Do I let him play? Or not play? We have rules. If you get caught with discipline issues, cheating on a test, you don't train or play. So I made the decision. Sean was not to play. Even though clubs were flying across the world to see Sean play. So the parents calling me on the phone, yelling at me. The coaches of the national team on the phone yelling at me. And most coaches would let the boy play to try to win. For me, if I let him play, I lose the respect of the entire program. And I teach Sean that no matter what he does, he's always going to play because he's talented. So Sean didn't play. And I told the parents, I told the club, don't yell at me, yell at Sean. He's the one that made the poor decision. I'm just holding him accountable for breaking the rules. So what happened? The clubs came. And they chose another boy. Who no one thought had the level, had the ability. But this boy was always respectful. Always respectful. Straight A student. Never a discipline problem. And deserved the opportunity. Six months ago, Sean called me on the phone. I hadn't heard from him in four years. He called me to tell me he's getting married. And he told me that the decision I made that day for him, he now understands why I did it.
And he said thank you to me. So your environment in football is very important. And holding children accountable for their actions, good and bad, is important. So in our school, we're very strict, very disciplined. For example, students are not allowed to have their cell phones in class from 7.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. If they get caught with their cell phone during the academic day, they have six hours of detention. Scrubbing dishes, working uh, in the cafeteria, sitting in the room after school, and they're not allowed to train or play until they finish those detention hours. They must keep their room neat and make their bed. They must, do. must keep their room clean and make their bed. They must have acceptable grades or they don't train. So I get a report every two weeks of the grades of 170 kids in our program and I look through it every two weeks. And if the grades are not acceptable, they don't train, they don't play until they bring them up. All the discipline for problems in the school, I get sent report. Any of our kids on the discipline report, they don't train. And the players, the student athletes always say, but coach, why? Why is this important? The rules are too hard to follow. And I say, really? If I have a meeting with my boss at 7 a.m. and I show up at 7.05, I have problems. If I have a job interview and I show up not dressed well and I'm late, I'm not getting the job. If I have a job and I cheat in my job somehow and get caught, I get fired. It's the same thing. These are rules of life. So what we do for success is we use the football as the motivating factor to develop young men. Because sport teaches many things of life. Teaches you how to compete. How to compete. How to win. How to lose. How to work with people you don't like. How to deal with problems. How to respect. All these things teach these boys and girls about life. So for me as a coach, all the coaches here, if we win or lose, that's not what's important to me in my program. Because sometimes you learn the most losing a game. Sometimes you, you when you lose, you learn the most. 
wakati mwingine ukipoteza ndio unajifunza zaidi And so in our academy we focus on the person. Kwa hiyo kwenye academy Simba wao wana focus katika mtu mchezaji. All aspects of life. Na yote yaliyopo katika maisha. Not just the football. Sio mpira. Because if you only focus on the football and you don't know what's going on with the rest of their lives it's very difficult this is why Barcelona has La Masia they bring kids in under their control the kids live at the academy the kids train there they go to school there so they control the environment a culture of excellence sasa hii ndio maana Barcelona wana La Masia ambapo watoto wanaingia pale wanafundishwa wanakuwa katika shule lakini wanakuwa katika mikono na uangalizi wa Barcelona because as an adult my role is to give back through football but develop young men that can go out in the world and be good people whether they make it as a footballer or not kwa hiyo kwake yeye ni kuweza kupanda vijana kupitia mchezo wa mpira mguu kuelimisha But too many too many people in the football world only care about winning or only care if a boy is good because of money. And I've had many African boys who move on to professional football and get taken advantage of for money. So now I'm involved in that area to try to help them be make the right decisions in their lives. Because it matters most to me what type of person they are than what type of soccer player they are. But in terms of development, your culture and your environment is what matters most. Your structure, your discipline, and your accountability. People today don't want to hold kids accountable because they want to win. But the reality is if you don't hold an accountable you may win the game but you lose the, the long term. So, so our school is a private school in the United States. It's an international private boarding school. It's located in Orlando in the state of Florida. And we have kids from over 90 different countries around the world. But our number one mission is to prepare them for university. Because we're a school. We're not a club. So the number one reason why they're there is to get an education. And our three pillars of belief are knowledge, community, and character. So we work with our kids every single day. School, five days per week. Training, five days per week. Study hall for two hours each night, six days per week. Six. And we hold them accountable. But in order to do that, you must have a culture of what I call a culture of excellence. Every piece of their lives must be the best version of themselves. 
kila jambo katika maisha yao kila siku natakiwa iwe ndio dira ya maisha yao and you as a coach or a manager cannot accept anything below the best they can be na wewe kama kocha au wakala utakiwi kukubali kitu ambacho kiko chini ya kile ambacho kinatakiwa kile because what people don't realize is education and development and sport match together kitu ambacho watu wakifahamu ni kwamba elimu na michezo vinashikamana Many people especially here in Africa and South America they think education here sports here choose. What mengi Africa and other America wanasema kwamba michezo elimu. That's not correct. Because the children love sport. And if we take that away from them maybe we're taking away an opportunity. First and foremost, kids these days with social media and, and technology, they need to be exercising. They need to be out exercising for their health. It's good for them. It's good for their mental, it's good for their physical, and it's good for their relation. The education is directly related with their ability on the field. If I have a straight A student, there's no way on the field he's someone who doesn't pay attention, who's not disciplined and doesn't work hard. It doesn't exist. You understand? If I have a, 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 stu a great student, that kid on the field is not is is focused discipline listens and works hard guaranteed kama kuna mchezaji ambaye ana yuko vizuri katika elimu na yuko focus katika mambo yote haya ambayo anataka huyo safi so ni kijana sana ambaye elimu ana uwezo anasikiliza na ana nidhamu but if i have a lazy student in class lakini akiwa na kijana mzembe ndani ya darasa guarantee you there's lazy problems on the field too it's the person. That's why. So then my job is how can I bring them up in the classroom, which will then automatically bring them up on the field. And as adults, the reality, I'm just going to be real with them. The reality of anyone this morning. Being Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi is zero. The reality of anyone this morning that I saw making millions and millions of dollars at the game is zero. But that doesn't mean that they can't have opportunities through playing soccer. That doesn't mean that they can't play professional soccer. But the reality is, is less than 1% of all kids playing soccer to make it big, it's less than half of 1%. I, I've had super talents that can play in Europe, no problem. And I was super talent I'm not a But the problem is, is when there was pressure, they couldn't play. I had one boy, fantastic player, invited on a trip to Manchester United. Tore his ACL. Out for two years. ACL? Yeah. I had another super player. Got in a car accident with his mother. A car accident with his mom. An injury that ruined his career. The injury ruined his career. 
So we as adults cannot just think that because our kids are good at soccer that they're going to save the day and make us a million dollars. But we have to encourage them to continue playing, continue to dream, but also most importantly encourage their education. Because the reality is, is most of them will have to use their education to provide for their families when they're older. Even if a kid was talented out here beyond belief, he cannot go to Europe before he's 18. If he is a super talent, the rules of FIFA say you are not allowed to go to Europe until you are 18 years old. And in soccer, once you are above 30, you're considered old. So if we talk about the elite talent, the life of a sportsman is maybe five to ten years. So we must prepare our kids to live beyond that through their education. This is what we do at our school. In the United States, we have schools that combine education and sport together. We have universities where kids can go play their sport and it's professional, it's more professional than many European clubs with the facilities, the coaching, the uniforms, the travel, everything. So we have many students come to Monvert Academy when they're 15, 16 to learn English, to study, to train, and graduate prepared for university. And we have universities that don't pay the students money, but they give them a scholarship to come play at their university for free for four years of education and high level football. And then after they graduate from college, they can try a professional career. Because however long their career may last, they have a diploma from a university that they can use for their future. So I have just, I'll go through the slides very quickly. So you see a little bit about what I'm talking about. Taking into account language, religion, food, social, music, art, culture derives from the Latin term colere, which means to tend to the earth and grow, or cultivation and nurture, meaning development. We also challenge the kids to live a life of excellence, meaning that every single day they try to be the best versions of themselves they can be. So we define excellence as the quality of being outstanding or extremely good. Uh, when, when I define uh, uh, excellence, 
greatness and the very best and working to excel to be the best you can be. So, the importance of a culture, an environment to breed success, it must be safe and it must be professional. The kids must want to go to training or want to go to school. It must be safe and professional. Everything as professional as can be. Our coaches must be positive people, positive examples for the kids. How many times do you see a coach that's just screaming at the kids at what they do wrong and telling the kids how bad they are and telling the kids, you know, in a bad tone, in a negative tone? It ruins the confidence. A coach in a kid's life will never forget you. The kids will never forget their coaches. For good things and also for bad things. We must allow them to dream. All those kids out there wanted to be professionals. It's never our job to say, you can't do it. We have to be realistic with them and encourage them, but as adults, know the reality. We must challenge their minds. Many of the kids I saw there, they struggle with how to make decisions. That shows me in training, they're not getting exercises that force them to think. It shows me when I watch the games that they're training with their coaches. The coaches are not giving them exercises that make them think. You must communicate with the kids and you must communicate with their parents. Communication is very important. You must hold them accountable. So if you have practice at 7, and they show up at 7.05, you need to hold them accountable. If you're supposed to wear black shorts and he shows up in white shorts, hold them accountable. You must be truthful and you must be honest with them. Even if the truth and being honest is something they don't want to hear. And you must pay attention to every single detail. I was paying attention to so many things from the second I got here till now that I could tell you uh, for four hours things that we could address. But that shows me what environments they're in right now. Next slide. One thing, coaches, club managers, agents, it's not about you. It's about the kids. 
They are the reason why we do what we do. I don't coach to brag to the world that we haven't lost a game in 10 years. I coach to help the children in life. As I told you, person first, student second, athlete third. We have this exact same mentality of student athlete. Student becoming first in life, athlete coming second. Too many people believe in athletic students or just athletes, and this is the wrong formula for life. The education is their future. They must have always discipline and respect. If they don't, hold them accountable. For example, last week I had a boy, one of our soccer players, who was disrespectful to a teacher. This week he can go to training, but he cannot participate. He must watch. Because we need to teach them, if you're not respectful, you're not allowed to play football in this academy. That forces them to understand what's really important. Work ethic is very important. Your, the, your, the, the work that you put in is very important. For me as a director, I work 24 hours a day. Because it's my passion. I am really enjoying speaking to you. Maybe we watch a game afterwards. People are on texting me on the phone about problems. This is what I do. So if you have to have passion to get the results out of what you want, you have to believe in it and you have to have passion for it. If you don't have passion, the kids won't have passion. If you don't have passion as a director, your coaches won't have passion. If the coach doesn't have passion, the players won't have passion. I always say that a kid is a direct reflection of his parents and his coaches. So if I am the coach and we're supposed to be at a meeting at 7, I can't show up at 7.02. If we have a meeting at 7, I have to be there at 6. To make sure that I'm on time. Because it's hard to hold children accountable if you are not following the same rules. Next slide. This is all of it encompassed into one. The way we believe as, a, as our academy. So the director, what we believe in the student. Commitment to academics and determination. Giving back to the community. As I told you, the average lifespan of a professional athlete is between one and four years. That's even if they get there. That's why we must prepare our children for life through sport. 
4% of kids who want to play at university in the US, only 4% get to play at the elite level of Division One. For only 4% ever get to a top level of university football in the US. And less than 1% get to pro. So the question I always ask people when I travel. If this is reality, less than 1% reach, achieve professional level soccer. Why do we focus on the 1%? And who is focusing on the other 99% that won't make it? That's why education is so important. Next. So actually, go back. Go back. This boy came from Brazil. Four years with our academy. Went to university on scholarship. Now a professional in Portugal. A professional in Portugal. This boy is a local boy from Orlando. With elite academics. He never played soccer in college. But he got a full academic scholarship to college. A 100% scholarship academically to college. That's, that's still a success for Sima. This boy comes from Senegal. Was with me for five years. Learned English, graduated. Is now a professional in the US. Next slide. Uh. We must care about the three elements when it comes to development. As coaches and directors, you must try to know what's going on at home. Because many of these kids, when they come to practice or games, you can sense something's wrong, usually there's a problem at home. And it's your duty as a coach to engage to try to help them through these problems. School performance, you must, you must check into their school. Coaches, four times per year in your season, one day take a day of training, tell them to bring their report card and show you. See what they're doing in, in school. It will teach you a lot about the person. And then, of course, you can assess their sport performance. But it's always the same. Person, school, sport. In that order. Ah, go back, sorry. This boy from Senegal, with me four years, learned English, graduated from Unvert, got a four-year scholarship, athletic scholarship to Virginia Commonwealth, and in two weeks he'll be the first person to graduate in the history of his family from a university. <coughs> We're very proud of this. Next.
Positive energy provides a positive learning environment. Training and matches, the adult should be positive, not negative. Uh, positive, positive energy provides a positive learning environment. Positive. Be positive. Don't be negative. Always be positive. And this one, I, this one I challenge the coaches. How many coaches take the time to know their athletes outside of the football field? Do you know their parents? Do you know if they have brothers or sisters? Do you know what they like to do outside of football? Do you know where they live? Do you know where they go to school? If you don't, and you're only caring about the talent, you're not going to get the, the development you're looking for. Next. We did this. Next one. Ah, go back, sorry. This was the very first boy that came from Africa in our soccer program in 2011. It's a very interesting story. Orlando City was the professional team in the city. My, my friend was the assistant coach. My roommate in college was the assistant coach. He called me and he said, look, we have a player here. We're not interested in signing him, but he's interested in going to school. And he came in with another boy named Adama. And they wanted to sign Adama. And when they started, Adama's level of football was here. Omar was here. After eight months at our academy, Omar was here and Adama was here. And he developed confidence. Adama lived in an apartment by himself, could not speak English, never learned English, could not communicate with people could not understand training. When he went home, he couldn't order a pizza or he couldn't uh, talk to anyone. Go to the mall, he couldn't talk to anyone. So he grew very frustrated, starting getting red cards in games. Now, Omar is playing in Germany, second Bundesliga. And Adama is in Senegal. So it shows the development of the person allowed the confidence of this young man to become better and the lack of social interaction and the lack of the holistic development approach and only the football resulted in the other boy back in Senegal. And Omar was born in 1994. So he's getting older. But he has education. He speaks English. So no matter what, he can return to Senegal and help his family because he's educated. This is what I view as success. Next one. We must love and try to improve all the kids, not just the good ones. Coaches and club directors most times focus only on the good ones. But you never know, a kid may be at 14, Changes completely at 16. Under you 17? Under 17. And you 20. Nah, under 20. We beat River Plate, Copa Libertadores champions, River Plate of Argentina. 
Sima four, River Plate three. The U.S. national team, U-17. We've beat them three times. We've beat the U-18 national team once. U-18, U.S. national team. That's, that's not an under-17. U-17? Yeah, and U-20. And U-20. U-20, Marabon. So it's not about trying to force wins. It's about the process. If you focus on the process of every day, you will win games. The problem is if you don't focus on the process, then you put the pressure on the players to win, you don't win. Or you may lose. Kama utaweka focus yako katika process ya kila siku kama coach. Kila siku ukajua kinachofanyika kwa wachezaji wako basi utashinda. Lakini kama ufanye jambo hilo kama coach, hautaweza kufanikiwa. So for example, Manford Academy, Manford Academy. We hold the record in the United in the history of the United States soccer. For most games never lost. 178. So our team win 100 178. Lose zero. And never once did I focus on winning. And sometimes you learn the most when you lose. Remember this. This is a body of work of the result of what I'm talking about. This slide represents everything I'm speaking of. So we had 50, this year we had 50 12th graders that were graduating to college, 50. Fourteen different countries within that 50. Forty-five with academic excellence on a roll. Four were called into their national teams. Five were called prefects, senior leaders of the school, five. There's only 12 in the whole school and five of them for, from SEMA. Yeah. We completed 1,250 service hours to the community. One hundred percent of all fifty were accepted to the college of their choice. Three boys wound up signing professional contracts. The rest kept playing in university, studying and playing on scholarships. So when you focus on the whole person, this is our trophy. This is our, this is our victory of the game. And we lost some games in here. But that's not what's important. What's important is that. They're ready to move to the next level. Education. Education. These are them. How do you I would tell you the universities, but you don't, wouldn't know them. But those are all the. Go back. Those are all the universities they got scholarships to from our soccer team. And some of the top top universities in the United States. And these are some of our graduates in the professional game. So this is one short story. I always say education plus sport equals opportunity. This boy I visited in Senegal. He's named Malik. 
we were in Bali for the Senegal. Came to Sima. Played with us for four years. Was the first person to graduate from his family, college, university. And now he's a professional. But when he's done, he has this that no one can ever take from him. He's fluent in English. And he already started his own charity back in Senegal. This is the success of a coach. Real life stories. One day, maybe it's Tanzania, Tanzania, Tanzania. <laughs> And tell them it's it, it's not it's not that West Africa has talent and East Africa does not have talent. No. They're human beings. It's the environment that you take put them into that that helps them get to where they want to go. Cameroon. Yeah. Do they have questions? Yeah. Yeah. Presenting here, you say that a coach sometimes they should not be yelling. That most of the coaches are yelling at the student, they're just using that language. So it's asking what uh, if a student is supposed to be at the pitch in one set, or he did something which is not acceptable. What method should he use so that he can understand without yelling? Yeah. So what I do. First time, positively. Because you're managing a person. The good and the bad. abuse. <laughs> Wangapi wanakuwa abuse wakiwa wadogo. Wangapi wanalawitiwa wakiwa bado wajiingia katika ile bila. Na ni kesi kubwa sana na maeneo mengine. Inadudu na kuja na kudokea makocha, inadokea wachezaji wakubwa katika timu. Sasa utajiwaje tatizo la ni mtoto? Kweli limetoka hapo ndani ya timu au limeanzia kule kwa watoto? Sasa nakuta mtoto amekuja aongee au wenzako na mabuse Another thing that's important for coaches 
Do they know if their kids are eating? Because that dictates what you can do and what you can't do in training if, if they're not eating. It's a, big, it's a big issue you have to take into consideration. With the heat, if they're not eating, it's, you have to be very careful. What kind of punishment do you prefer for players who repeat the same mistake? Maybe for this environment. The most powerful punishment? No training, no games. You, you, you don't have to yell at them. You don't have to scream at them. You don't have to say, the big game Saturday, we don't need you to come. Stay home. <laughs> Changes them very quickly. <laughs> the foot, tell them the football, the football training in the game is, is the dessert of the meal. Uh, football training. Eh? Football training in what? And the games. If they don't follow rules, no dessert today. If you need to go, that's up. <laughs> this is. That's up. <laughs> The challenge is this new culture that I'm having to having to win. So that your team played fantastic. Exactly how you wanted them to play. Exactly how uh, you trained through the week. And your goalkeeper makes a mistake. Does that mean you should be fired? D they did exactly what you wanted. But you lost. No. <laughs> But, but imagine you work according to this and you develop five Tanzanian national team players and three of them go into professional football and one of them makes uh, a big contract to feed the rest of the club for 10 years you, and you, you're going to get fired for that? these kids are 13 the bosses need to understand these are children not professionals yeah, that's a difficult one for them to understand no tell them they have to understand these are children they're not professional players Children make mistakes. And maybe those mistakes cost you games. Yeah, I'm going to go to the 
Kama nataiza matokeo tu bado huta kapa kwa namna hii. I'm just saying if you're relying on on your own your results you won't even have uh, a long tenure at that particular time. So at some point you still lose. Correct. So for example, I'll give an example real quick. The first game we saw today. A blue team versus a red team. A blue team had better players. If I were to guess, I would say blue probably would win the game. But tactically, they weren't organized. So although blue was a better team, red had 10 times more opportunities to score goals. So maybe the only way that blue is going to change tactically is by losing the game. No, I think um, overall the teams were pretty much the same level. I think that the coaches of those teams need to have an identity of how they want to play football. And that's with ball and without ball. I saw many uh, teams tactically needing a lot of work defensively. Nice to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Thank you. What I'm doing here is I'm seeing the landscape of how football, how education works together or not. Because each African country is different. One thing, I, well, one thing I would like to do is perhaps bring my team here for summer camps to work with the kids and have talks with the kids about exactly what we're speaking of. For example, maybe one week of just working with the coaches. One week working with the players. Because me coming here speaking for two hours is just the very start. It has to be another movement where there's actual uh, movement. So it's just the beginning. And to answer her question too, also the others. We as a school have a f financial aid program. So basically, families that don't have the money to be able to go to the school, 
we have a program that helps those families be able to come even though they don't have the money. So for example, if one day we see one day a talent from out here maybe comes to the US for the program. Maybe that's possible. And then it shows what's possible when a child comes to us and see his progress. This is how we started in Senegal. Yes, because when the other kids see one out and they follow him and they see what he's doing, it brings everyone up and it gives the hope that maybe they could be next. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, tukio katika semina ya kujifunza kuhusu maendeleo ya soka vijana uh, kwenye pita pita zetu tukapata bahati ya kukutana na mtaalamu wa Lishe. Kwa majina anaitwa Asina Yusuf, ni mtaalamu wa Lishe kutoka Consenat. Consenat ni shirika lisilo la kiserikali linalojihulisha na masuala ya Lishe masuala ya jinsia na vijana. Shughuli zetu kubwa tunalenga makundi mbalimbali mbali, uh, katika jamii wanawake, watoto, wazee na makundi mengine ambayo tunaita makundi ya tarishi, vulnerable groups. Ah, uh, Consenat kwa kiasi kikubwa inafanya kazi kuwajengea uwezo jamii. Kama nilivyosema kupitia lishe, masuala ya jinsia na vijana. Tuko hapa leo kwa ajili ya tuko hapa leo kwa ajili ya kuelimisha na kuongeza uelewa wa jamii kuhusu muhimu wa lishe kwa watoto hasa vijana wetu ambao wanashiriki michezo. Michezo na lishe ni mambo ambayo yanakwenda sambamba kwa asilimia kubwa sana na tungependa jamii elewe umuhimu wa lishe katika michezo. Watoto wetu wanahitaji kupata virutubisho vya aina zote kutoka vyakula mbalimbali, mbali, kutoka makundi yote ya vyakula makundi ya vyakula vya wanga, vyakula vya protini, nikimaanisha vyakula vinavyotokana na wanyama na asili ya jamii ya mikunde, vyakula kama matunda na mboga mboga. Lengo ni kuimarisha afya na miili ya vijana wetu wawapo uwanjani. Hii inawapunguzia 
uh, kuchelewa kupona. Hii itawasaidia vijana wetu wanapopata majeraha uwanjani waweze kupona haraka. Lakini wanapoteza madini mengi na maji wanapokuwa uwanjani. Kwa hiyo vijana wetu wanahitaji kuelewa vinywaji vilivyo salama kiafya wa wapo katika michezo. Kuliko kutumia vinywaji kama energy drink na vinywaji vingine ni bora kutumia sports drink, kutumia maji ya madafu, juisi za matunda matunda mchanganyiko na maziwa hivi ni vinywaji salama kiafya vinarudisha virutubisho lakini vinaimarisha miili yao. Consent tunatumia nafasi hii kuifahamisha jamii kwamba tupo kwa ajili ya kuongeza uelewa wa lishe lakini zaidi ya hapo tunatoa huduma ya ushauri zaidi kwa vijana kwa ajili ya kuwajengea uwezo kwa kuelimisha stadi za maisha lakini pia kuwapa mwongozo wa lishe. Karibuni sana. Tunapatikana Dar es Salaam ofisi yetu makao makuu yako Mwenge barabara ya Samnujoma Asante Namba ya simu kwa mawasiliano ni 0652881001 Hiyo ni kwa mawasiliano ya ushauri na si Uh, kwa majina anaitwa uh, Joseph Makungu ni mkurugenzi mtendaji wa Darwin Education Agency. Darwin Education Agency ni wakala wa vikuu vya nje. Tumekuwa tukisaidia wanafunzi wengi marefu na maelfu kila mwaka kuwasaidia kupata vyo vya nje nchi, hasa nchi za India, China, Malaysia, Canada, Poland na nchi nyingine mbalimbali. Uh, kampuni yetu imeanza mwaka 2015 uh, katika kufanya uh, kuwasaidia wanafunzi Huduma zetu hasa kubwa tunawashauri wanafunzi juu ya uchaguzi wa program mbalimbali katika level ya chokeku. Ah tugundua kwamba baadhi ya wanafunzi wengi hawezi kutawajitambua, hawashindwa kutambua na program gani ya kusoma katika level ya chokeku wanapomaliza form 6 au wanapomaliza au wanapomaliza diploma. Ah so kampuni yetu ikaanzishwa kwa lengo la kuondoa ile gap ambayo iliyopo kati ya vyo vikuu vya nje na au wanafunzi wapo hitimu za vikuu tutachagua kozi na na magani ya kwa linki. So kampuni yetu ndio kama hapo. Kwa sasa hivi kuna scholarship ambazo ziko open au ziko wazi za scholarship za India, scholarship nyingine za nchi nyingine ambapo wanafunzi wanalipiwa full funded scholarship, analipiwa ada yote, analipiwa accommodation, analipiwa chakula. Uh, ili mwanafunzi aweze kufanikiwa kupata scholarship, mwanafunzi inabidi afanye mtihani up to the exams ambao ni multiple choice, unafanyika mtihani mwezi wa 5. Uh, Atakapofanya mtihani kifauru angalau 50% au 50% ya max zote ana wanafunzi huyu atalipiwa ada yote, atalipiwa maradhi, atalipiwa na chakula. So uh, application hizi zimefungua kuanzia mwezi wa 12 uh, mpaka mwezi wa 3. Tunahisi wale wa itimu ambao wanategemea kumaliza form 6 mwaka jia, mwaka kesho au ambao wanategemea kumaliza po diploma mwakani, ni muda wa apply kuanzia mwezi wa 12 huu mpaka mwezi wa 3 mwakani. Uh, ofisi zetu ziko barabara Nyerere na uh, jengo la City Furnitures. Kwa kwa masalamu zaidi za kupigia namba au kaingia kwenye website yetu ukafanya applications lakini uh, kwa namba yetu ya mawasiliano ni 0677800800 au katembeleo ofisini kwetu. Asanteni sana na karibuni sana kwa ajili ya mwongezi. Eh? Namba yetu ya simu ni 0677800800. Ah